Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at TP-Link's ER605 VPN router and we're going to set it up in standalone mode in this video. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed so we can check out what it all has to offer hardware wise. In the box there's really not too much to see, just a manual and some uh, general public notice thing, uh, some feet, power cable, the, the VPN router itself, and an Ethernet cable, which is all nice to see. And let's go ahead and get this cracked open so we can see what all ports it has and all that cool shindigs. Starting on the front with port one, we have a gigabit WAN port. Then ports two through four are all gigabit LAN ports as well that can also be configured for WAN. And these ports are capable of doing load balancing, which may be important to some of you out there. And finally, the fifth port is also a one gigabit LAN port. TP-Link's marketing for this thing says that it can support 20 IPsec tunnels, 16 L2TP tunnels, 16 PPTP tunnels, and 16 OpenVPN tunnels. Uh, not sure what that means of simultaneous connections. I wish that was something I could test, but unfortunately it is not. But it would be great to have in the home or small business as well as in the home lab uh, for those of you that are definitely interested in like having your own VPN run off of your hardware versus in a container or on a virtual machine. All right, cool. So now that we got all of that knocked out of the way, let's go ahead and get this thing configured for standalone mode. To set this thing up in standalone mode, it's actually pretty simple. All we need is any computer with a web browser uh, that we can plug directly into this thing once we get it powered on, and we'll be able to configure and control it from there. So I'm gonna give this thing power. And one thing that we're gonna do before we actually start configuring it is actually check it out and see just how much power it uses uh, while idling slash unconfigured because I'm curious. Uh, so let me get this plugged in and then we will go through the setup process. Okay, so we got this thing plugged in. It's obviously not doing anything because it's not configured. And lo and behold, it is not using, well, it is using power, but it's using so little power it doesn't even show up here on my uh, cyber power UPS. So we're having an output of zero watts. Uh, I don't know what else to expect from that, but maybe when it's actually under load, it could be greater. But unfortunately, that's not something I'm going to be able to test at this time. Okay, before we actually connect this thing to the internet or my gateway, my AT&T gateway, I actually want to configure it first. I'm going to plug it here into the WAN port, and it looks like it already lit up because it's detecting my MacBook. So let's head over there and start this configuration. To configure the ER605 in standalone mode, all we need to do is navigate to 192.168.0.1 in our favorite browser, in this case Firefox, and it will take us right to the user or to the router. And the next thing we need to do here is create a administrator account and password. So I'm just going to use admin in this case, and then use a very super secret password that no one will ever be able to guess in a million years. Confirm that. And now we just need to log back, actually log in, and make sure that we type in our password correctly. And there we go. So this is how we would manage the VPN router from here. Um, we can do things like uh, see our or set our WAN mode uh, here. So we have three ports actually available to change to WAN ports if we'd like. And that's what we uh, showed you earlier. That's ports two through four. And these are capable of load balancing uh, as a reminder. And then of course we have a LAN port here. And we're not gonna get too far into this, but this thing is capable of doing some minor things if you're looking at just getting a nice router at home. Uh, for instance, it is capable of being a DHCP server, so you could set all of your DHCP uh, preferences here. So let's say you didn't want to be on 192.168.0.1. You could do something like 10.1.1.10 or whatever. Whatever you want, you'd be able to set all of that here. Um, Further down the line, it is capable of doing some VLANs, which is really great to see, and some minor switching if you so choose. You can actually select uh, the switch ports here or mirrored ports, whatever this is. Um, we're, like I said, we're not going to get into too much detail here, but this is that's pretty much all you need to do uh, from like a basic configuration port or standpoint, I should say. Um, we're going to actually change this 
here to uh, 1, 7, actually, no, no, we're going to change this to 10.10.1.1. Uh, we're going to say save. Uh, okay. It's going to give us a new login page. Okay, so it took the changes. Now we just need to log back in once again uh, to get back to the configuration. Oh, I think I mistyped my password there. Okay, so if we go back to network, we go to LAN, and we can see that we have updated the IP address of the actual device itself. And then, of course, our DHCP ranges update for us, which is really nice. Um, let's go back to status. So there are some pretty interesting traffic stats available here. Uh, we can see all the data that's been transmitted already uh, just between my MacBook and the device itself over LAN 1, which is pretty cool. Um, there's some information here and in system stats. Looks like we can have a dynamic IP address or static IP address somewhere in here. Um, here we can set up our VPNs. These are all the options we have. Looks like this is where we can configure our port forwarding and other firewall rules. Um, that's just a guess. This thing does have a built-in firewall, by the way, uh, which is really nice. Um, so there are loads of options here. I'd say this is pretty basic uh, for a setup, but you know, if this is something, I think this is pretty something uh, simple that you could do on your own with a little bit of time. Again, we're not going to go into uh, a detailed setup here, um, but there are plenty of options. And well, that was our introductory look into TP-Link's ER605 configured in standalone mode. Obviously, we didn't do a detailed configuration. Um, this wasn't supposed to be a guide. It was more like a first look, if anything. But we will be doing a detailed guide in the future, but we will be using the hardware controller instead. And that is basically giving us a nice, pretty web UI for novices like myself uh, to configure all of these different devices and set them up in a much easier way uh, than, I guess, maybe the current UI that exists on this thing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing that. And as always, I want to thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.